you can do more advanced things with, uh, with strings. You, you can do a lot of things, right? We're, we're touching the surface of what you can do in Bash. Um, one of the things, though, that's often handy to be able to do is essentially get more clever in our processing of names. So you may want to be able to do something like search for everything with a specific file ending and like change the file ending, right? So let's say you wanted to take a, I mean, I have cause to use this every now and then, but maybe it's a contrived example, but you're converting a bunch of, you have a bunch of files in a folder that are all .c files, but you just want to go and print them off or something, or you want to just read them as text files, so you want to rename them all instead of .c to be .txt. Or you have a bunch of video files in the folder that you've converted, but you haven't actually changed the names yet, you just converted the actual file, so you need to go and change all your file decisions. Or maybe even more likely, you decide you want to change the name, you want to name something in a file, right? So you have all your music files, and instead of being named artist-album-file name, you want to be named, you want to switch the order of those or something, right? So this requires being able to find every file, which we know how to do, but then it requires grabbing parts of the file name and rearranging it, which we haven't done yet. So we essentially need to grab substrings and then do different things with them. So Bash has what's called chopping, and this is essentially a way to start getting at substrings. So the way this works is we have some variable, right? We have some strings. So I just created a variable called string, and I set it equal to hello world. If I want to chop something, I use curly brackets. So I'm going to dollar sign curly brackets and then the name of the string I want to start with. So in the name of the variable holding the string I want to start with, right? So I'm starting with the string hello world. There are two chopping operators, essentially. There are the two number signs, and there's the single number sign. What the two number signs are going to do is they're essentially going to match whatever it can match here, and then they're going to print the longest substring that string contains that matches the following. That matches the, following. the next command is going to do the same thing, only it's going to match the shortest. So one searches for the longest substring that satisfies some pattern, and one searches for the shortest substring that satisfies some pattern. In this case, I'm going to echo them both. So let's comment out the rest of this. It'll, it'll become more clear once you see it. OK. So let's comment out the rest of that, and let's run this. So my input was hello world, and my output, maybe we should modify this to actually print what we're doing, right? So if we echo, so essentially when I chop for, I think I can do this and it'll print out. So what's the difference between bash scripting and programming? Because there seems to be a I mean, this is it's a type of programming, right? It's a scripting language, there's no compiler. It's just running right off the bat. But you can do, you can write, oh, some programs are written in Bash. Like, that is the language. Um, it tends to be more of a utility thing than you, know, you wouldn't go and write a web application in Bash, right? It has limits. Um, but if you need to write a little utility program that goes through and manipulates files in particular, or if you need to write a program that like, monitors another program, uh, Bash tends to be good for doing something like that. So let me see if I can make this one. Okay. So my input was hello world, right? That as well. Okay, so my input was hello world. And when I did this on it, what it did is it found the longest string that matches star L. So the longest string that matches star L is everything up to this L. People see that? So it's anything that ends in an L. So it's the longest substring that matches star L and then it's returning whatever is not contained in that substring. This here does the same thing, only it's searching for the shortest substring matched by star L, right? So it's gonna essentially search up until this first L, and then it's gonna return the remainder. So you can use this to essentially grab any substring you can need on a given file, right? So if we wanna get a little bit more clever, let's comment out this first part. So let's do something a little bit more clever, right? Let's try to evaluate whether or not um, 
let's we, we say we just want to chop the file ending off, right? So this is a pretty common use case. You want to take a file name and you want to extract whatever the last dot something is, right? So to do that, I'm going to take an argument. So in this case, I'm going to take it just so one means the first argument to this program, right? So I could pass it a, whatever I pass on the first argument is going to be our string here. And then I'm saying, search for the longest string that ends in a period. So it's basically going to find the last period in this string. It's going to chop that off, and then I'm going to compare whatever is left. So anything after the last period, I'm going to compare to a C. So I'm searching for something to see if it's a .c file. Does that make sense? Then I do a conditional. If it's true, obviously, I say this appears to be C. If it's not, and so on and so forth. So if we run this program, and if I run this on itself, right, it's not a .c file because it ends in .sh. But if I run this on something that ends in .c, it's recognizing that. And these don't actually have to be file names, right? It's just looking for, so if I do, you know, that's going to be false. And if I do that, it's going to be true. It's, it's, I'm not ever testing if these files even exist, right? I'm just taking the input string. So I could turn this into a loop like we did before. I could check every file. I could now sort of, I could, some, I could write a loop that only processes files that end in .c, right? I could write a loop that called my compiler. There's actually a better way to do that, and it's called make files if you want to mess with a compiler. But uh, you know, if these were MP3 files, I could do something that search for every MP3 file. And then I could call a ffmpeg, which is a command line media player, and I could play each MP3 file one at a time, right? I could search my computer for every MP3 file on the computer, and I could play them one at a time until I had played every MP3 file on the computer, which would be my script that I was So you can, bash scripting is really handy for taking other programs and tying them together in clever ways, right? Finding all of a certain type of file and running a certain program on them, or renaming all of a certain type of file, or running a bunch of programs, taking their output, searching them for something, and then saving it to like a condensed log file that's easier to do. Um, 